And good afternoon. We have the four o'clock advisory on Hurricane Dorian and good news is not much has changed from either the coordinates and the current conditions of the storm or the track, which I'll show you in just a second. Winds are still at 85 miles an hour. Forward motion still at 13 miles an hour, and that's going to be key over the next couple of days because what we want is, believe it or not, we want a slower moving storm. A slower moving storm is going to make dramatic terms far easier than a fast moving storm. Just the sheer size and forward speed of a hurricane will make some dramatic changes in their track if they're going slower than they would be uh, compared to faster. So we're going to be watching that forward speed closely over the next couple of days and also the maximum winds. Now, not a big surprise that winds are still at 85 miles an hour because it actually looked like on satellite that it was undergoing an eye wall replacement cycle. And usually when that is occurring, there's a new eye wall starting to form. Usually you don't really see those with category one storms, but sure enough, Dorian is doing that. And usually during that process, the storm sometimes can actually weaken or if nothing else kind of remain status quo and you don't really see any major changes. Now the storm is still projected to move toward Florida as a major category four storm just before landfall somewhere. And I tell you what, no one along the east coast of Florida is not under the gun right now. Everybody is going to be watching this very closely from basically the keys up toward Jacksonville and even parts of southern Georgia, only because there is still a great deal of uncertainty with precisely where it is going to be moving inland if at all, and I'll talk about that coming up in just a second. Now, if you notice and what we watch for and the reason why we show that center line, a lot of folks kind of question that because we also tell you not to focus on the center line because it can be on either side. I like using the center line and have been doing so for 15 years only because it tells you as to whether or not the thinking from the National Hurricane Center is shifting one way or another. And if you remember at a time that center line was basically right over Cape Canaveral, there had been later model runs that were shifting a little bit more north and then more recently shifting it down to the south. Now even farther down to the south is not necessarily a bad thing for us or more of a detriment to the Gulf of Mexico and I'll show you some of the computers as to why that is. But now you're looking at more south of Cape Canaveral as uh, possibly the center of where the storm is going to be moving inland. But there are still some models that bring it south of Miami and we'll kind of break down some of those coming up in just a second. We're going to be losing our visible satellite imagery here shortly, but at one time Dorian was showing signs of an eye. And that is not something you often see with a weaker category one storm. You tend to see those with more of our major hurricanes. Well, just to show you that is a uh, that Dorian is a very well defined, very symmetrical storm, and the current environment is perfect for further strengthening. Now, again, with that eye wall replacement, we weren't anticipating any strengthening over the near future, but as we continue through the night tonight and certainly into tomorrow, we're expecting more rapid strengthening. You also see that wind fee or the, uh, the the cloud field that cirrus field coming in off the northern and uh, um, eastern side of it showing the growth in the atmosphere of those storms. So there is really nothing inhibiting further strengthening of Dorian over the next several days. So here's the current position. Now this is water vapor. So this is looking into the upper parts of the atmosphere. What you have out ahead of Dorian, you see this little spin right here. This is a little weak upper level low and with that and the upper high its more of a mid level Bermuda high that is up to the north. That's going to keep Dorian kind of moving along that northwesterly or even west northwesterly track over the next couple of days. And that looks to be a pattern that's going to stay in place at least until Saturday and possibly on into Sunday. So for the next few days, upper the mid level high is going to be in control. And as I mentioned, it's kind of following that upper level low. So Dorian is going to continue on this west northwest northwest westerly track over the next couple of days. As we get into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is where we're likely going to see Dorian moving inland. Now, what is the reason for that northward track? It's going to be because we finally see the Bermuda High beginning to break down and kind of shift a little bit more off the coast of the east uh, eastern seaboard and an upper trough is going to be moving in place. Dorian is going to follow that weakness in the upper high and follow this upper trough northward. Exactly when that occurs is still the big question. Whether or not that occurs before it actually reaches Florida, that is still 
possible, not likely at this point, but still very possible. As a matter of fact, I was looking at some of the computers earlier, and there was one cluster that brought all of uh, uh, that brought Dorian inland and then northward, and there was another cluster that actually took Dorian off the east coast of Florida, actually never making landfall. So there is a better chance of Dorian never reaching Florida than there is for any kind of impacts to southeast Louisiana. It will begin that northward track probably sometime early next week. So here it is Thursday. We're going to be talking about this for at least the next five to maybe even seven days. Here's the GFS. Now this is the latest run, and this is actually kind of along the lines of what the Hurricane Center is saying in their forecast, maybe clipping the northern Bahama Islands before making its way inland just to the south of Cape Canaveral and then moving inland and then eventually making that turn to the north, never really getting into the Gulf of Mexico. And then the Euro model, uh, similar at least in terms of that track, but notice it actually has a west and then a southwesterly bend in the storm, kind of making landfall north of Miami, West Palm, and then kind of hugging the coast of Florida before maybe just moving inland sometimes uh, somewhere south of Jacksonville. So the point is computer models are still very much up in the air as to exactly where if it does make landfall along the coast of Florida. But this is going to be something that we're watching very closely and we'll have a far better idea of where it is going to be going kind of beyond making landfall. Let's for the sake of assumption, just assume it will be making landfall. Beyond that, we will know far more as we get into the weekend once we have a more uh, clearly defined structure and we also have that major hurricane. Again, this is still looking to be a major hurricane as it impacts folks in Florida and then continues up. Consider this. This is also going to be affecting a lot of folks along the eastern seaboard. One of the big uh, 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 factors for from deaths uh, associated with hurricanes is inland flooding, and that's going to be something that possibly if the euro is to be believed, it may be much of the state of Florida as well as up into the Appalachians and much of the East Coast. And again, for now, the way it is looking, we are going to see no impacts from the storm. And in fact, much of next week for us is going to be relatively dry. So that's your four o'clock advisory update on Hurricane Dorian. For now, I'm meteorologist Chris Franklin.